let's generate a new data set. So our images are annotated. We see differences between our training, our validation, and our testing sets. Let's get into what making a data set more complete looks like, and that is two steps, pre-processing and augmentation. Pre-processing, as you can see here, it basically makes training super fast. It encourages machines to see photos and see data in really rapid ways by making data consistent and similar. Right now, I have auto-orientant on, which RoboFlow provides a really brief example, but Basically, it is making sure images that are a little bit tilted are extremely oriented in kind of a very straightforward way. I'm going to apply it because RoboFlow recommends it. This is great, a RoboFlow feature, because it allows the different accumulations of pre-processing steps and allows you to really test what works for you and what works for your machine learning algorithm. In this case, I don't want to really use any others, and I'm just going to skip to augmentation. Different from pre-processing, which pre-processing is helping the machine learn faster, augmentation actually sometimes makes the algorithm train slower. And the reason for that is because it's adding different steps to really understand the data. And right now I have flip on in a horizontal flip more specifically because it is designed uh, to invert the image and homes are kind of built that way. Um, by looking at a home, you might not know which way it's applied. So adding this augmentation step, especially to a street view data set, is encouraging that machine learning algorithm to see different images and still understand, if slightly changed, what is damaged and what isn't. RoboFlow offers a breadth of them. You can either augment the image or augment the bounding box altogether. I'm going to stick with some pretty basic ones. I would like to note, Shear is a fantastic augmentation if you are taking images potentially from a car. Now, some researchers are taking images from uh, cars with a hooked up camera, and what happens is it makes these images just a little bit tilted, just a little bit slighted. And what the Shear would do is help the model understand different formats and types of imagery. Right now, from Street View, we're looking dead on at the house, but if you're using images that, you know, tend to lean a little bit one way or the other, think about applying different augmentation steps. Right now, I'm gonna keep auto-orient and flip on. These are some pretty basic ones that I think will help the data set and help the machine train fast. Now, we get to the last step, which is seeing how many images will actually go into the data. And by using different augmentations, it actually increases the number. So we started with 860. Now, what RoboFlow will do is double or triple that for us. Or you can pay for, you know, even up to, you know, 50 times the images. Right now, I'm sticking with the free software and using just three times to get about 2,000 images. And what we can do is really test and see how this works. So let's generate our data set. I'm gonna stick with, again, the same standard annotation protocol and label it accordingly. Um, what's nice about this is that exporting and importing is all extremely succinct. So a word of caution when creating data sets, as I mentioned, you can splice up different augmentation steps and consistently create new data sets. Um, it is really important to note that when you are going to use these different data sets, that you keep in mind what is happening to what, which means in this first version I created just a day ago, there were different steps I took and potentially a whole different set of images. Now today, I've annotated more images, I've added new pre-processing steps. So using these two data sets, you need to be clear when you're training your algorithm what you're training it on. So for my purposes, the most up-to-date is version two. That's where this naming protocol really is helpful. It's understanding that data set is continually growing and changing, and we need to adapt for that. While our data set loads, let's take a look at my first version. And here you can see what a final product will look like. All of your images hosted in one place, the ability to see the different um, amounts of training, validation, and testing. See here, I have different amounts than that 70, 20, and 10 